You are about to hear a story suggested by actual events. So that no innocent person shall suffer, names and places have been changed. Auto Light and its 96,000 dealers bring you a story from the front pages of our great metropolitan newspapers. A story taken from life. Tonight's presentation of... Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents The Case for Dr. Singer, a story about atomic spies in the United States today, how they operate, how they are caught. Hi, uh, Hap. So long, Harlow. So long? You haven't even said hello yet. Well, this is our last show till fall, isn't it? It sure is, Hap. And that means we won't have a chance to talk about that great Autolite stay-full battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use, until after our vacation. Harlow, if folks don't know by now that the Autolite stay-full battery is tops in dependability, convenience, and long life, then I give up. Well, no need to give up, Hap, because the Autolite stay-full is famous from coast to coast. Car owners everywhere know it has over three times the liquid reserve of batteries without stay-full features and needs water only three times a year in normal car use. My neighbor bought one just the other day. Car owners know, too, that fiberglass retaining mats protect every positive plate to prevent shedding and flaking and give the Autolite stay-full longer life, as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. Well, that's mighty important news for every car owner, Harlow. It sure is, Hap. So, friends, take a tip from me and see your neighborhood Autolite battery dealer soon. Ask him for an Autolite Stay Full, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. You'll be sure of the best because you're always right with Autolite. And now, with the case for Dr. Singer, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in... Suspense! Minus 30. Minus 25. Wednesday, May 15th, 1951. Minus 20. Early morning. Six men watch and wait. I suggest we have some coffee. May 16th, 1951. Confidential to Major General Carl Buescher, Atomic Energy Commission. From Professor Leland R. Young regarding thermonuclear H-23. At 6.30 a.m., May the 15th, H-23 was successfully detonated without the use of U-235. Enclosed herewith, technical data compiled after explosion. Complete destruction up to 10 miles. The most powerful weapon yet discovered. Complete destruction up to 10 miles and set off without the use of the A-bomb. Thermonuclear H-23 is top secret. This is the story, not certainly of the development of H-23, but of the fact that it still remains top secret. January 3rd, 1951. Confidential. To Headquarters Military Intelligence, Washington, D.C. From American Embassy, Switzerland. This morning, a man was shot as he entered the building. 
Before he lost consciousness, he identified himself as Dr. Rudolf Ellman. He was taken to the hospital, where his condition has been reported critical. Nurse. Yes? I am Colonel Mishikov. I wish to see Mr. Farnsworth, the American consul. Oh, just one moment. Doctor? Yes? This is... I am Colonel Mishikov. I wish to see Mr. Farnsworth. Well, he's... Uh... You have a man here who has identified himself as Dr. Rudolf Ellman. Yes, we have. His real name is Voroshin. He's an escaped convict. And I have orders from my government to take him into custody. Dr. Ellman? No, he's not a doctor. His name is Voroshin. He is an escaped convict. Well, doctor. whoever he is, he's dying. A doctor. I am here representing my country. I have authority in Colonel this... Mishikov. You have no authority in this hospital. If you wish to see the patient, I would suggest you obtain permission from the chief of staff. I see. Now, if you will excuse me. Doctor? Yes? I presume Mr. Farnsworth obtained permission. He did. Good day, Colonel. Nurse? Yes, Doctor. Thermonuclear weapons. I discovered the plan a week ago. Mr. Farnsworth. Yes? Uh, Colonel Mishikov. Oh, no. He's here? I just spoke to him in the hall. I sent him to the staff chief for permission. Did he know I was here? Yes. Doctor! Adrenaline. Doctor? He's dead. <laughs> To Headquarters Military Intelligence, Washington, D.C. From Henry W. Farnsworth, American Embassy, Switzerland. Dr. Rudolf Ellman died here at 5.50 p.m. this day. Obtained statement of great importance if deceased is really Ellman. Soviet government claims he is Alexander Voroshin, escaped convict and citizen of USSR. Please advise. <laughs> Yes? Dr. Singer? Yes? This is Professor Young. Would you please come up to security? Certainly. Well, George, I've got these rundowns on the pile. Wonderful, wonderful. i got to go up to security. I'll go over them with you as soon as I'm finished. Still going to play poker tonight? <laughs> Wouldn't miss it. I'll give you a buzz when I'm through. All right. Come in, Doctor. Dr. Singer, this is Mr. Whiteside and General Busher. I know the General. How are you, sir? Just fine, Doctor. And Mr. Whiteside, how do you do? How do you do, Doctor? Sit down, George. Thank you. Mr. Whiteside is from the FBI. Oh? Did you know a Dr. Elman? Rudolph Elman? Yes. Well, very well. I studied under him in Germany. Here's a picture. Is this the man you knew? Well, yes. Much thinner, but this is Dr. Elman. Uh, we taught at the same university. He's dead. When did he die? During the war. This man died four days ago. And this is not Dr. Elman. He was killed by the Nazis trying to escape from Germany. This man was shot in front of the American embassy in Switzerland. We've known for some time that Dr. Elman was a prisoner in Siberia working on thermonuclear weapons. How are your experiments coming, Doctor? I'm afraid that's confidential, General, even to you. Elman knew just about how far you'd progress. That's impossible. This, uh... It's a portion of his testimony recorded just before he died. It was sent to us by Farnsworth of the American Embassy in Switzerland. Sure this man was Elman? Elman was a brilliant physicist, was he not, Doctor? Extremely brilliant. If information concerning your work here was smuggled out, he would be capable of understanding it? Elman would not only be capable, but extremely useful. General, are you suggesting that someone on my staff... I suggest you read Elman's statement concerning your work here on thermonuclear weapons. Grief. Professor Young. I've read it, George. But this shows knowledge of our progress as late as a month ago. Is it accurate? Extremely. Lacking in a few details. Elman was dying. Extremely accurate. What does this mean, sir? It means that someone working on H-23 is acting as a spy. But who? Myself, Professor Young, and four others are the only ones who could possibly have access to this kind of information. Elman knew that you were close to what he calls in his statement the most powerful weapon of our times. His exact quote... 
The one weapon that might mean the difference between peace or total destruction. He escaped to let us know that someone is passing on this information. Do you know who it is? No. Professor Young said the same thing you did. It has to be one of six men. Professor Young, yourself, Doctor, Dr. Mitchell, Dr. Evans, and your assistants, Mr. Bromwell or Mr. Collings. Can't believe it. Why, these men are all trusted. So was Klaus Fuchs. Completely trusted. It seems impossible. We have to find him. Well, if you don't know who he is, don't you think it a little dangerous to confide in me? After all, I might be the one. You might be. But that's all been discussed. If we're going to find this man, someone, one of the five men working on your experiment has to help. We can't send in an outsider. Our man would get suspicious. Professor Young had to be notified. He's in charge of this plant. But we still need one of the men actually working on the project. Professor Young's only been supervised. We picked you. Why? Past record. My colleagues have records equally as trustworthy. We know all the records, Doctor. And I know these men I work with, Mr. Whiteside. Then perhaps you'll be able to find out which one is a traitor. Oh, I don't know. I repeat, what if I'm the traitor? Then I... I don't think you'd be foolish enough to continue sending information. And if the information doesn't continue to leave the country, we've accomplished two things. We've kept the project a secret, and we've found out that our man is onto us. Yes. Yes, I suppose that's right. If they steal H-23 from us, well... Oh, is there anything else? I think we've covered everything. Come on, George, I'll buy us a drink. Uh, nothing else for me at the moment, is there, General? No. Nice to see you again, Dr. Singer. Thank you, General. Oh, uh, I imagine I'll see you again, Mr. Whiteside. I imagine so, Doctor. Yes, of course. Hmm. What do you think, Whiteside? About Singer? Yeah. I'm interested in him, General. It might help if we get to know a bit more about him. He's the man? I don't know. That's what we've got to find out. Autolight is bringing you The Case for Dr. Singer, tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, Harlow, what are you going to do on your vacation? Why, Hap, as an advocate of the Autolite Stay Full battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use, I'm going to advise all car owners to adopt that adept, adaptable, and amazing actuator of abundant and dependable starts. Always in <laughs> there pitching, eh, Harlow? <laughs> you said it, Hap, and it's all because the Autolite Stay Full offers greater convenience and longer life. Greater convenience. Sure, Hap, because the Autolite Stay Full has over three times the liquid reserve of batteries without Stay Full features. That's why it needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Longer life, too, Arnold. Right you are, Hap, because life ensuring fiberglass retaining mats protect every positive plate to prevent shedding and flaking and give the Autolite Stay Full longer life as proven by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. Well... I'll see you next August, Harlow. So long, Hap. And friends, before you start your vacation, see your Autolite battery dealer. He's the expert on battery advice and service. Ask him for an Autolite Stay Full battery. And remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite returns you to our Hollywood soundstage and Elliot Lewis's production of The Case for Dr. Singer. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Confidential, from Special Agent Whiteside to Division 33 Federal Bureau of Investigation, Washington, D.C. Talked with Dr. Singer, and he has agreed to proceed as planned. Advise Charlie. Oh, hi, Charlie. Hey, Benny. Sit down. Have a beer. Thanks. Been waiting long? Nah, about five minutes. How's Margie? Okay. Had the flu. One of the kids got it now. Don't you know I got to get it sooner or later? I had it. It's miserable. 
How's business? We got us three tons of whitefish yesterday with the price of... What do you have, boys? Benny? Beer. Just beer. Two beers. All right. Fish been running just great. The day before yesterday, we rolled in with over four tons. How's your business? Fine. We got two men on all of them. Apartments bug, 24-hour stakeout. What about Singer? So far, nothing. He works right with them. Maybe... I don't know. Checking I've done so far, they'll look pretty clean. Sure. Boy, we want smart. If it is Singer, smart as they come. I'll give you a report. Hold it. Two beers. Fifty cents. Well, cheers. Yeah. And good luck. I hope your next catch is the biggest yet. Confidential to Major General Carl Busher, Atomic Energy Commission, Washington. From Professor Leland R. Young, regarding thermonuclear H-23. Dr. Singer has informed me that H-23 experiments are proceeding on schedule. With luck, completion should be possible within the month. Singer has nothing else to report in regard to our previous discussion. Evans. And just a minute. Here. Here's a chart on the fishing yield. Certainly checks. 21 trillion calories. Oh, we're close. Now eliminate the carbon. How's Bromwell doing? Well, he's tired. You look tired, Singer. A little. Something wrong? No, 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 no. I, uh... I want to see how Bromwell's doing. Don't forget poker tonight. <laughs> no, I won't. Bromwell? Eh? Oh, hello, Singer. I'm still too low. How low? Three million six hundred thousand. Uh, I've got to go back. I had H04 as high as 19 million. What was the reaction time? Well, it's pretty close. Two one hundred thousandths. Very close. I think we should talk it over. Evans just finished his fission yield. 21 trillion. Uh, guess I am holding things up, huh? You've got the hardest job. Mitch and Collins are down at the reactor pile. Let's get them and talk. Yes? Benny? Yeah. Charlie, I got something I'd like you to hear. All right. I'll see you at the office in an hour. I'll raise him. Look out, singer. <laughs> you know, I don't think he has them. I don't know. He's had them all night. Oh. Excuse me, Collie. No, it's all right. What you boys have to do is put up some money to find out. All right. I'll just call. Oh, brother, I admire your courage, my friend. I haven't won a hand in the last two hours. I'll just let you be the hero. Let's see him. Full house. Aces and trades. What did I tell you? I knew he had it. Afraid it's your pot. Well, here, Moulton. Hey, Evans, you are, without a doubt, the luckiest. Played poker for another hour and went home. Nothing unusual. Hmm. A cigarette? Yeah. Thanks. Still no lead. Boy, I tell you... If it is Singer, he's real careful. Yeah, something new. Got word from the other side today, counterintelligence. Our boys say the Russians haven't had any message on the progress of the bomb for a couple of weeks now. They're worried. They're worried. If we only had one lead... We will have, the minute they finish their experiment. Someone's going to have to make his contact then. Well, if it's Singer or any of those men, we'll get him. I'm even having their mothers-in-law watched. Ninety-two thousand two hundred thirty-eight plus neutron, ninety-two thousand two hundred thirty-nine plus gamma radiation, ninety-two thousand two thirty-nine decays to ninety-three neptunium, two thirty-nine plus beta electron. Twenty-three minutes. Check. Uh, ninety-three neptunium, two hundred thirty-nine decays to ninety-four thousand two hundred thirty-nine. Evans, come here. Mitchell, uh, Collins. What is it? I've got it. I, I think I've got it. Carbon is completely isolated. Well, look. Look for yourself. Hmm. 
Why, yes. Yes. Let me see. Yes, here, Collins. Mm-hmm. Well, this is it. Congratulations, Bromwell. Yeah. Congratulations, Bromwell. Very Very good. Good. Well, gentlemen, H-23 is no longer theory. We can now begin to assemble the first one. Confidential to Major General Carl Busher, Atomic Energy Commission, Washington, from Special Agent Whiteside, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Regarding conclusion of H-23 experiments, counterintelligence has informed us that the Russians are in possession of the news of the same. They have not yet obtained details. How could it get out? How? I don't know, General. Charlie here's had him watched every second. I, I don't know. I know what they did better than they do. Every one of them. They're clean. Let's stop kidding ourselves. Somebody's not clean. The experiment was licked four days ago. Professor Young says they're working now to assemble the bomb. Then what do we do? Send the details by courier to the Russians? We might as well. We still have some time. What about Singer? I don't know. And Charlie? Yeah. Got those reports? Yeah. Well, let's go through them again. General... These are a survey of the movements of every man on that experiment. We'll pick up with the report starting four days ago. Go ahead, Charlie. Okay. Professor Young, March 15th, 8.30 a.m., escorted to lab. No contacts. 12 noon in company with Singer, Bromwell, and Evans went to lunch. No contacts. Wait a minute. What about the waiter? He's clear. We've already checked that. All right. Go on. 1 p.m., returned to lab. No contacts. 5.30 p.m., escorted home. No contacts. 8 p.m., Dr. and Mrs. Singer arrived. Stayed until 11 p.m., returned home, retired. Dr. Evans, March 15th, 8.30 a.m., escorted to lab. No contacts. 12 noon in company with Singer, Bromwell, and Young went to lunch. No contacts. Same waiter, General. 1 p.m., returned to lab. No contacts. 5.30 p.m., escorted home. No contacts. 7.30 p.m., called Dr. Singer. Asked him if he could play poker that night. Dr. Singer declined. Singer escorted to doctor's office for checkup. Sinus trouble. 5.30 p.m. escorted home. No contacts. Remained in house rest of night. Okay. Now this is the 16th. Start with Mr. Collings. 8.30 escorted to lab. No contacts. 12 noon lunch with Agent Dietrichman. 12.30 half hour appointments with dentist is scheduled. Cavity. 1.15 escorted back to lab. No contacts. Wait a minute. Yeah? Look, uh, it might be nothing, but it's worth a try. I want every man on that experiment examined. What for? A complete medical general. The works. Professor Young? Young, Singer, Evans, Collings, all of them. And today, no explanations. (laughs) Confidential. From Special Agent Whiteside to Major General Carl Busher. Examinations completed and proceeding as planned. We should know in a day or two. Anything yet? Hmm? Oh, Benny. No, no, nothing. He's alone in his office. When did you plant the mic? Early this morning. The superintendent let me in. It's in the cabinet. Yeah, they put the phones on. Yeah. Suppose he doesn't show up? Then we'll try the others. Hold it. Mr. Collins is here, doctor. Oh. Lucky you caught me, Mr. Collins. I was going out for lunch. Well, I'm certainly glad I could get around. So it's bothering you? A little. Shouldn't have been neglected. Just get up in the chair. I'll have a look at it. Been giving me a little trouble the last week. Mm-hmm. And we should have seen to it your last visit. Hey, Brian. Bad enough. Certainly have to fill it this time. I'll just get some Novocaine. Well, how's work? Tires. Oh, just open your mouth as far as you can. Yeah. Way open. That's it. There. Well, that'll be all, nurse. You might as well get your lunch. Oh, thank you, doctor. You should have really taken care of this long before now. I couldn't help it. I haven't had a moment to myself nearly three months. Thought I could let it go until work let up. Numb yet? I'm getting them. What do you have for me? Bromwell's formula. Can you get detailed sketches on the weapon when it's finished? No, it's been too dangerous. I can't take a chance now. I want the plan. No, this is all. It's too dangerous. All right. Give me what you have. Uh, 
$3,000. Of course. Here you are. And here you are. That's it. That's the man we want. Come on, Charlie. Is that the only door out of the office? Either of those doors. The only way. Well, thank you, Doctor. Take some aspirin at the closet. Yes. Get the dentist. Right. Mr. Collings. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes? Whiteside, Federal Bureau of Investigation. You're under arrest. can't believe it. Neither can I, Professor Young. Callings for $3,000. You had to work quickly, I guess, after that medical. I hired him, trained him. He was a student of mine ten years ago. How did it work, Mr. Whiteside? It was a chance, Professor Young. Collings had paid three or four visits to that dentist complaining of several cavities, just as Dr. Singer complained of sinusitis and Dr. Evans of recurrent insomnia. However, when we had all of you men examined by medical men attached to this experiment, we discovered Mr. Collings' teeth to be in perfect condition. Work done on a healthy mouth. If it hadn't been for Elman... Elman gave his life to tell us how much Russia knew of our thermonuclear research. You thought it was me, didn't you? Yes, Dr. Singer. For a while. I can't blame you. I really can't. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Do you know, in a way, I'm... I'm glad it was Collings. Oh, I don't know. It's cleaner somehow. It it keeps the trust and the faith alive in all of us. And that's the biggest thing we have, you know. Trust in each other. And faith. Well, may I go now? Yes, Doctor. I have work to do. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Harlow Wilcox speaking. Next week will mark national holidays for two great countries. On July 1st, Canada commemorates the 84th anniversary of its founding as a nation. And on July 4th, the United States celebrates the 175th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. May we all recognize the importance of these two great days in our lives and make continuation of our freedoms a must for ourselves, our children, and the generations to follow. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted tonight by Wilbur Hatch. The case for Dr. Singer was written for Suspense by Blake Edwards. In tonight's story, Joseph Kearns was heard as Dr. Singer, Larry Thor as Whiteside, Herb Butterfield as General Busher, and Clayton Post as Charlie. Featured in the cast were Ken Christie, Ted Von Elts, Howard McNair, Paul Fries, Larry Dobkin, Edgar Barrier, John Stevenson, and Truda Marson. Tonight's suspense program is the last for this season. Suspense on television will continue throughout the summer, and we'll be back on the CBS radio network the last week in August. Until then, this is Harlow Wilcox for Autolite, wishing you a pleasant summer. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>